Hey, my name is Rob. I'm a licensed professional counselor and a guy that has retired early. And the video is about, is it, are you too young to retire? And the answer is probably no. We live in a society that has some spoken and unspoken rules about retirement. And we get these messages in a variety of ways. Um, one is we get uh, messages from our friends and acquaintances. Um, if I'm in my 50s and I start talking about retiring, I might hear, oh, you're too, er you're too young to retire. You should wait. You should put away more money. We're bombarded in social media and magazines and television programs about preparing for retirement. And we hear routinely hear things like, you need a million dollars put away in your retirement fund to retire comfortably. And that may be true for some people. Um, I don't think it's true for the majority of people. Retirement is when you discover that you do have the means to not work full time anymore or not work at all anymore. And um, discovering that can be tricky. What do I mean by that? Well, I worked in a high stress, pretty high excitement career at the end of my career in emergency mental health. And I love going to work every day. It did create because of the nature of the work, a great deal of stress. And I discovered when I analyzed my before and after retirement expenses, that my spending level on various things has surprisingly dramatically been reduced. And it's discretionary spending. For example, I found before retirement as a single guy with a dog and a cat, are you ready for this? I was spending $800 a month at the grocery store. $800 a month at the grocery store. Now, I was going to Walmart as my grocery store, so there were certainly non-edible things I was buying. So that was my in-store food and accessory spending per month. In retirement, that's $400. Did I achieve that with discipline? No. It just, I, you know, I planned, okay, it's gonna be $800, so I planned on $800, and it wasn't $800, so what was the difference? The difference is because after retirement, and by the way, I didn't completely stop working after retirement. I work on a very part-time basis um, doing counseling, um, not in-person, but uh, virtual counseling, um, and I also, you're watching this, you know I do a YouTube channel. I don't do that for the money, but it consumes time. It's kind of a job, which I enjoy. Um, the stress level is almost non-existent compared to before I retired. The, I just don't, it, it, well, actually, if you look at my Amazon spending too, my Am, Amazon spending has cut in half. And I realized that when I was working, my, I was trying to medicate my stress levels. Right? And uh, one of the classic ways to medicate is to um, buy things that give you short little bursts of joy, right? Little gadgets and things here and there, the excitement of an Amazon package showing up. Um, I was over buying food. I wasn't eating $800 a month. I, was, um, I wasn't keeping track of it, but I know that I was throwing out things that weren't lasting because I, I couldn't eat them fast enough. And I would treat myself with special things to eat and um, get excited about eating. And um, don't get me wrong, I still love to eat. Look at me, I'm not wasting away to nothing, but I don't get that excitement I used to get about eating and I don't. Uh, unless it's social, I don't usually feel the need to, to go out to eat. That wasn't the case before. So magically, my um, spending decreased. Right? 
and granted when I left my job my income certainly decreased but I went from about even my expenses my outcome and income were about even to my income significantly exceeds my expenses in retirement and that seems counterintuitive but it's not only my experience it's the the experience of many retirees um, there comes a time in your life where you realize that through your career you've been making an exchange and agreed upon an exchange and that exchange is you agree to exchange money for your time and it's a pretty good deal especially if you have something that you enjoy doing a career that you've chosen that may things that make you feel good as you get later in life your 40s your 50s your 60s the value of your time gets greater and greater to the point where in my case I realized there isn't anything this employer could have paid me that I felt was worth my time so I realized you know I'm when I retired, I was 61. Um, my dad died at 82. So if I die when my dad dies, I've got 20 years left. And I think back how quickly the last 20 years went, and I go, wow, that's not a lot of time. And I know the next 20 years is gonna go far faster from my perspective than the last 20 years. So um, my time became, um, the value was infinite. So I found a way to, I used savings to pay off any debts that I had. I uh, uh, went into retirement debt free and went into retirement with um, a good plan and minimum spending. And I really found that I'm, sp I'm spending less organically I'm not really trying it's just happening and it's happening because I feel the sense of joy and freedom and I've been doing this over a year now every single day occasionally I have a bad day but that is truly the outright exception um, the vast majority have been very good days um, and what really motivated me to do this video wasn't just my experience it was um, I've developed, developed a niche with clients where I'm getting um, men in their uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s coming to me with anxiety and depression. And um, I begin to notice a pattern. And there are men that um, have started to realize they're not really happy going to work every day. And in most of these cases, when I start asking questions about what they want in their life and what their means are, I discovered that these men, <laughs> they could have retired before this conversation, financially. And when they look at it, they, they tend to be, one, a little surprised, and two, they hang on to this idea, well, I'm too young to retire. I'm like, no, you're not. If you have the means to retire, right? if you're under 65, the biggest thing that you have to worry about if you're under 65 is you don't get government subsidized Medicare until you're 65 um, and you have a decent income stream as a retirement, you have to budget a pretty significant amount of money per month if you, you really need good health insurance. And that can be anywhere from, you know, five, four to five hundred dollars, seven, eight hundred dollars, depending on your coverage and where you live. It's, it's, but it's, it's a big chunk, right? And once these men realize that, hey, I do have a choice. Um, one of them, within. Um, after uh, a month worth of sessions, actually put in his retirement papers. And uh, in the discussion of, you know, what retirement might, might look like, uh, I asked him, well, what do you love? What do you enjoy doing? And he said, God, I 
really love bicycles. I like to fix bicycles. And I just, I like being around people that love bicycles like I do. And I said, well, what would stop you from retiring and going to work minimum wage in a bicycle shop? And he looked at me and he thought, well, nothing, I guess. And I said, you can do that. And it's like this light bulb went out. He said, you know what? You're right, I can do that. And right now that's the plan. He's um, put in his um, retirement papers, is retiring from a, a very um, uh, good career with a large organization where he made a lot of money, but going to work every day just was not making him happy over a long period of time. So one of the results is depression and anxiety. And I can see um, the symptoms of these things lift off him gradually as he was going through the process of making that decision. He decided I have the means and my time is worth, right now in my life, my time is worth way more than anything my employer can offer me. Um, and he's absolutely thrilled. One little trick that we used um, even before we started retirement that was kind of exciting um, for him and for me was he, with his anxiety, he would um, catastrophize um, virtually any event that potentially could have a negative outcome. Um, and he would sort of go down this deep abyss rabbit hole of, it's gonna be horrible, it's gonna be terrible, I'm not gonna survive this. Um, and the, the slightest trigger would um, kick off this catastrophizing cycle. And, you know, in sessions when we talked about it, he knew, hey, it, I, I know intellectually it doesn't make any sense, but um, there's nothing that sort of kicks me out of that cycle you know, once I'm away from you and out in the world and it happens. And I said, well, why don't you, um, why don't you write something on like a business card that's designed to, you pull it out of your pocket when it's happening, it's designed to trigger a thought process that will get you out of that cycle. And we kicked ideas back and forth. And one of the big things was any time that anything um, physically happened with him, an ache or a pain or something on his skin, or um, he would immediately go to, oh my God, I've got cancer. <laughs> and he would immediately go to his medical provider and um, of course he would find out time and time again, it was something minor, benign, not cancer. And he would get that relief. So um, this, is not something I recommend for everyone, but he decided on to put on a card, it's not cancer. And that work, that was designed to work with not only physical and medical things, but anything that he was um, spinning into this catastrophizing. And uh, I joked with him, I said that, 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 um, that card will probably be wrong once. Um, and, uh, understood the reference and uh, it's uh, because lots of people it ends up being cancer and it's a, a very serious sad thing but in most cases it's not it was a good trigger it was a good he felt it would be a good thing for him and lo and behold he reported back enthusiastically it works it was an interruption to the process that involves something physical a card pull the card out of his wallet, look at it. It was something physical and it short circuited that lifelong process of catastrophizing. And this is a guy that um, is excited about um, a whole new life in front of him that he didn't think was gonna be possible. And he's in his 50s and occasionally um, someone will say, oh, you're too young to retire. And he has a good laugh. I hope at least some of you got something out of this video. Take care.